Good morning, honey bunnies. I'm gonna let y'all jump on a couple more minutes. We're gonna do a live training today on how to set boundaries because they are very important. Yes, yes, they are. So when you come in, I think this is a little bit delayed because when I go back and watch the replay, I can see like so many of you were here from the beginning and I can only see like one or two. So make sure you wave when you come in, say hello. Let me know how you're doing. Are things opening back up where you are? I'm in North Carolina, so I think we're about to go into like a soft phase two. Is that right? Accurate? I don't know. I'm not really sure how it works. To be completely honest, I work from home, so quarantine life is kind of like my everyday. So... I'm thriving. <laughs> what I've noticed is that when I go to the store, um, it's just nice because it's not as crowded. You know, silver lining and everything. Crystal, it is a motivated morning. <laughs> I love it. It's a very motivated morning. I did not feel too motivated though this morning because it has been just so deliciously lazy and like gloomy outside and rainy and I mean I'm motivated to get my work done but it's like I just kind of want to wear cozy clothes and make raza lattes and hang out all day you know what I mean so anyway when you come in make sure you say hello pop on we're gonna get started here in a couple of minutes we're doing a live training on how to set clear boundaries around your health and wellness goals without feeling guilty so if you are an LRD, whether you're in 180, the DIY course, or you're in our group community 2.0, you know all about boundary setting because it's one of the homework assignments. So I expect any of you in LRD, again, whether it's 180 or 2.0, if you sit in on this training, chime in and let us know if you've done this assignment and some things that you've learned. That would be really cool um, to connect. So we'll go ahead and get started. Let me take one more little sip of my Raza latte. And for those of you who have asked me about the Raza before, this is a coffee alternative. It has no caffeine. It's got ashwagandha, dandelion root, um, a bunch of other herbal roots that I can't really think of right now, but I can only remember dandelion root and ashwagandha. But it tastes really good. It kind of has a coffee-ish flavor, but it's more smoky. It's very earthy. Um, you could drink it cold, hot. I like to brew it with some almond milk and a little bit of stevia, but it is so good. Mm. Okay. It just hits different, you know what I mean? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Crystal, I order it, well, I make it, but I, I, I order it off Amazon. It's just a dry herbal blend, and then I make it. So yeah, both, both. Um, my Amazon store is going to be finished in a little while, y'all, so you can get all my goodies there. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the training. Again, when you come in, make sure you wave, say hello. If you have questions or comments, leave them here in the thread. I'm not going to check them until the end because I've noticed that with myself, I'm very ADD. So if I see a bunch of comments and questions, I'll lose my train of thought. So let's go ahead and get rolling. Boundary setting. So the point of this training today is to empower you to feel in control over your life. And y'all know that I'm looking at my notes, so I'm not talking to an imaginary friend. I'm just trying to stay focused. But yeah, I want you to feel empowered and feel like you have control over your life. This is going to help you build your self-esteem and most importantly, create space for yourself so you can guard your energy because let's face it, when we are constantly saying yes to others, we are saying what? No, to ourselves. And that's not okay. Ain't okay with me. It shouldn't be okay with you. So the first thing that I want you to write down in your notes today is this little phrase that I love to tell my clients. And it is, the less I do, the more I accomplish. Sounds counterintuitive, but let's repeat it. The less I do, the more I accomplish. It's very true. So I want you to start thinking today about who or what drains your energy the most. 
Is there a certain activity or person or group of people that whenever you think of them or they come around, you just get this pit in your stomach like, oh God, I cannot handle this today. That's all of us and that's okay. But I want you to start paying attention to those feelings because that is your body giving you very, very uh, strong signals and messaging around the things that you should or probably should not uh, be surrounding yourself with, okay? Our gut instinct is very powerful. It's a very powerful tool of our intuition. So think about who or what drains your energy the most. And then I want you to start thinking about, and write this down, that question, by the way, who or what drains my energy the most? And then how can I modify or reduce the amount of energy that I am expending unnecessarily? How can I modify or reduce the amount of energy that I am expending unnecessarily? So for today, let's go ahead and start with people. Because I feel like whenever we start talking about boundaries, our first inclination is to think about people, right? Who are we distancing ourselves from? Social distancing. This is going to be a this is perfect timing for this lesson today. I love it. See a couple more of you have come in. Hello, welcome to the club. So glad that you're here for the Kate Show. So let's go ahead and start with people, like I said. I want you to start thinking of people who drain your energy. Remember I asked that a couple of minutes ago? Who are groups of people, or maybe it's one person, but whenever you see a text pop up, or maybe you see them at the grocery store, or maybe you walk into your office, wherever that is, and you're just like, oh God, I just cannot today. I cannot with this person today. We've all been there. Hey, I might that I may I may be that person to someone. Who knows? I may be too much for someone. That's fine. That's fine. We're all different, okay? And there's nothing wrong with those people just because you don't like the way you feel around them either, okay? It could just be a mixed match of energy, so keep that in mind. There's nothing negative or wrong with any of what we're doing here. We're not craftfully coming up with ways to be bitchy to other people. We're just owning our energy and our power and learning how to coexist and balance that energy around other people and things. Okay, that's all it is. We're going to get into that a little bit more, but I just want you to, I kind of wanted to preface that, preface that. I want you to keep that in the back of your mind, okay? That boundary setting is not mean. And again, that's why we're here. So we don't feel any guilt, right? So who are those people, start jotting down, who are those people that really suck my energy? So the next question I want you to ask is, what is the ultimate reason I'm afraid to say no? Hmm. Is it rejection? Is it the fear that if I say no, they're, gonna, they're not gonna ask me to do anything again? That's a very real fear. I'm going to end up alone. I'm not going to have any friends. I'm not going to have a social life. I've had some students and clients tell me like, Kate, I'm afraid to take a break from the social scene because I feel like if I disappear for a month or two and do my thing, that when I come back, like, it's FOMO. Like, my friends are going to move on without me. They're going to change or not like me anymore. Maybe they won't like the changes I made. So I want you to define your ultimate reason that you're afraid to say no. Now I want you to write these things down. I am not responsible for regulating other people's feelings. I am not responsible for regulating other people's feelings. It's very important. Next, I do not owe anyone an explanation. I do not owe anyone an explanation. I want you girls meditating on these affirmations the next couple of days. All I owe anybody, this is your next one, all I owe anybody is love and kindness. And it's true. All I owe anybody is love and kindness. 
And lastly, if someone truly cares about me, they will adapt to and understand my boundaries. If someone truly cares about me, they will adapt and understand to my, or my boundary. They will adapt to and understand my boundaries. Y'all stop me if I'm moving too fast. I feel like I'm going painfully slow, but it's probably good. It's probably, probably a good, good sweet spot in the middle. Make sure you're taking notes. This is important stuff, y'all. So now I want you to, does anyone need me to repeat those four affirmations for boundaries? I'll go through them one more time. One, I am not responsible for regulating other people's feelings. Two, two, I do not owe anyone an explanation or justification, whatever you want to write. And three, okay, quick, this is a random ADD question. When you say three to someone, do you go like this or do you go like that? Don't think, just do it. I go like that. Three. All I owe anybody is love and kindness. All I owe anybody is love and kindness. For if someone truly cares about me, they will adapt to and understand my boundaries. If someone truly cares about me, they will adapt to and understand my boundaries. Now, I want you to write these things down and reflect. Which environments are best for me? Which environments do I feel safe in? Which environments are best for me? Which environments do I typically make good decisions in? And there's no right or wrong answer to this. Just whatever comes to mind. Or whoever comes to mind. Now, I want you to write down which environments tend to lead me to making bad decisions or lead me feeling unsafe. Sorry, that's my space heater. Yes, I have a heater on. It, I have really tall vaulted ceilings in my home in the main living areas, and so it just gets so chilly and especially here in my office. So sometimes I have to bring in my little space heater and warm up. So that's what you're hearing. Um, again, which environments tend to lead me to making bad decisions? Which environments do I feel less willpower, less discipline? Which environments do I feel reckless in? And now I want you to write down who are the people that typically influence me in a negative way? Who are people that typically influence me in a negative way? Who do you tend to get in trouble with? Who do your worst hangovers evolve around? When does, when does stuff really hit the fan? Who, who are those people? You know who they are. Who likes to get elbow deep in a pint of ice cream with me? <laughs> Isn't it funny how we have friends we can call for some things and then friends we call for others? <laughs> this activity will help you identify that real quick. All right, so who are the people that typically influence me in a negative way? And now what are some things that happen when I am with these people? What happens? Write it down, jot it down. There's no point in lying to yourself here. The more candid and matter of fact and real you are, it's funny, we can laugh at ourselves, but the more real we are, the quicker we can move on from this and we can really understand ourselves. Because once you, once you proclaim something out loud and you affirm it, 
you're aware of it. And then it's really hard to keep consciously acting it out. You know what I mean? So who, who are the people that typically influence me in a negative way? And what are some things that happen when I'm with these people? What happens? It starts with, a, what does it start with? It starts with a text, maybe an invite. Maybe you meet at a certain bar. Just write it down, even if it's bullet points. What happens when I'm with these people? And lastly, how do I feel afterwards? When I go home the next day, when I walk away, like from the conversation, how do I feel afterwards when I've been around these people? I think it's really important to capitalize and pinpoint those emotions and feelings that are connected to these people in these environments. Like you need to see it and read it and experience it and learn it so you can avoid it. So who are the people that typically influence me in a negative way? What are some things that happen when I'm with these people? And how do I feel afterwards? Be honest. You owe it to yourself to be honest. Now let's shift. Who are people that influence me in a positive way? Who helps me live my best life? Who holds me accountable to my highest self and to my highest good? Who are people that influence me in a positive way? I hope I'm one of them. May not be, who knows, but I hope I am. Who are people that influence me in a positive way? And just like the exercise we just did, what are some things that happen when I'm with these people? What are things that happen, things that take place when I'm with these people? Am I working on myself? Do we make good decisions? Do we take care of ourselves? What are some things that happen or what are some activities that take place with these people that influence me in a positive way? What are our, what are our conversations and our activities and and uh, our exchanges look like. Take some time to jot that down real quick. What, how do I, do, again, what, what are the conversations? What are some words that come to mind? Activities, pictures, visuals? What comes to, anything that comes to mind when you envision hanging out with the people that make you feel and perform your best? And lastly, again, how do I feel afterwards? How do I feel when I walk away from these people and these experiences, these social gatherings? How do I feel compared, or how do I feel walking away from positive influences compared to how I feel walking away after being around negative influences? Again, let's be honest. Call it for what it is. And again, it has nothing to do with those people it's just how it affects you, okay? Just because I may not like a certain movie because it makes me feel bad doesn't mean that it's not a award-winning movie. I just don't like the way it makes me feel. You see what I'm saying? May or may not be a good analogy. It's just kind of what came to mind. So again, who are people that influence me in a positive way? What are some things that happen or what do I associate when I'm around these people? How do I feel after I've been around these people? And I think that's a really good comparison. Again, how do I feel afterwards being around negative influences versus positive influences? So how do we... What are some things that we remember when we're setting boundaries with other people without feeling guilt? So I gave you those affirmations to begin with. And then I had you reflect on actual people and things that are negative influences and then positive influences in your life because I really want you to identify and illuminate who and what those influences are, the associations and the activities that surround those people and influences and ultimately how it affects you. Like, how do you walk away from that? Because the more you dive into that today, whether you're here now or watching the replay, when you take these notes, remember I told you there's power in writing it down. There is. So once you get it out of your head and you see it on paper and you start proclaiming it 
and you confirm um, the truth around these matters, it's going to be really hard for you to ignore it, which is going to make it easier for you to correct it and set those boundaries. So here's how I tell my students in LRD to set boundaries. First, set expectations for people, okay? Now, some people, if you're not close with them, you don't, again, you don't own a, an explanation. You don't need to send out an announcement, okay? But set expectations to inform your closest loved ones. Like the people that are going to probably expect to hear from you, see you, etc. If you're going to be changing up the frequency or rate of exchange that you're around these people, you know, you can set an expectation with them. You can inform your closest loved ones. It can be a text. It can be a letter. It can be an email. Maybe you meet with them regularly and you just bring it up in the conversation. But what that looks like, for example, is, hey, friend, look, I've been struggling and I, I, I haven't been completely honest with you. I love hanging out with you. We've been friends for so long. I love our wine nights. I love all of our nights, the things that we do together. I love taco night, whatever it is. But the truth is, I have, like I said, I've been struggling. Um, you know, I've got about 15 pounds to lose. And I've been going to my doctor and I'm not in any danger, but I'm just not where I need to be. And I'm really wanting to make some changes. And I've been kind of scared to bring it up because I don't want you to think that I don't want to you know, hang out with you. I don't want you to think that I'm not uh, fun anymore or any of that stuff, but gosh, I just, for the next, next month or two, maybe even a couple of months, I'm really not going to be able to do wine night and taco night. So can we start thinking about maybe some different things that we could do, or uh, maybe we could meet on a different day. Like maybe we could start, you know, running together on Saturday mornings and then going to get a smoothie bowl together or something like that. I'm just going off the cuff here, but there's so many ways that you can bring this up. So whatever that is for you, go ahead and you don't have to do it right now, but jot down right now um, some examples of scripts. And I want you to write down a conversation or practice um, coming up with several different responses that you could deliver to these people that you're going to set some boundaries with. So when you're doing that, when you're writing out the examples of these scripts, also write out every potential invite. Potential, hopefully there won't be any, but argument or reaction. Anything and everything that you could think of that's like, well, what if they say this? Or what if they do this? Or what if I get this invite? Or... Whatever those are, because you know what they are. They're probably already going off in your head. Go ahead and write every single one down until you cannot think of any more. And then out next to each one, I want you to write out how you would respond. Even if it doesn't feel like what you've been doing and it's different, go ahead and write it out. I want you to see yourself writing out these responses. I want you to see yourself giving yourself permission to say no without feeling guilty. And I want you to write this down too. Write the word no, kind of like by itself, and write out next to the word no, what does no mean to you? What kind of feelings does no bring up to you? Does it feel negative and rejecting? Because that's, that's your own thing that you gotta work through. What do you associate the word no with? See, I used to feel really guilty about saying no. I said yes to everybody but myself. That was a problem. But now I look at the word no as empowering and I almost have looked at the word yes as more of a, of a weaker word, if that makes sense. I look at no as strong and affirming and confident and very resolute and clear um, with where I stand with myself and, and what my values are. So no, it's really just saying yes to something else. So let's continue thinking of some potential invites, arguments, reactions, um, 
upcoming events, dates, parties, things that you can see yourself needing to say no or modify some boundaries around. I want you to envision every what if scenario and again out next to it, how you will respond. Make your own scripts and study them because if you get a text or you get that invite or it does pop up, you can go back to your notes and you can see how and what you would feel most comfortable responding in terms of saying, you know, setting a boundary and saying no. And I just want to say something too. People who are codependent love to latch on and they put their, they're, they're very codependent with their emotions and especially regulating their feelings and they tend to put all of their eggs in, in one basket, that basket being people. So please do not be surprised if you have a very codependent friend that when you try to set a boundary or say no or suggest an alternative activity or an alternative time to meet, if they get kind of weird or passive aggressive, just remember that that behavior is a reflection of how they feel about themselves. Likely they're not used to being told no, which is why they are the way that they are, which is why they push and push and push. So they don't always know how to accept or process a boundary. They likely struggle with boundaries in their own lives. So when other people set boundaries, they don't know how to process that. So just kind of remember this conversation with me right now. And if you start getting a little bit of like backlash from setting a boundary, just remember that it's okay. That's normal. And they will figure it out. And you are not responsible, remember that affirmation, you are not responsible for regulating the emotionality of another person, okay? That's called parenting yourself. And just like you are parenting yourself, they need to parent themselves. That is not your job, okay? Give me a little heart in the comments if that helps. Lastly, before we finish, I want you to think about some boundaries with yourself. Hmm. Because we've covered the gamut in the last half hour on how to say no to other people. But how do we say no to ourselves? We do need to have boundaries with ourselves, don't we? So, I want you to write this down as a reflection question. Where do I need to have better boundaries with myself? Is it in the workplace? Is it at home? Is it your nighttime routine? Is it around your nutrition? Is it around your TV time, your phone, social media? Where do I need to have better boundaries with myself? Don't be surprised if you start coming up with a lot more boundaries for yourself than you did with other people. <laughs> And then I have a final little homework assignment for you. I want you to write a letter to yourself today and it doesn't, it can be a paragraph. It doesn't have to be an essay, okay? I mean, it could be, it depends on how, how in depth you wanna get, but write a letter or a paragraph to yourself today with a reminder of why you need to make these boundaries Set these boundaries, make boundaries, whatever. Set these boundaries. The benefits of setting them. Why they're going to serve you long term. Because remember, we're all about that long term game here. Sustainability. And three, why is it important that you not break these boundaries? So one more time. And you can do this today. I'd, li I'd like for you to do it today while it's fresh in your mind. But if you want to save it for the weekend or you know that you'll get to it and you're accountable, then that's fine. But this prompt is, again, write a letter to yourself today with a reminder of three things. One, why and what, uh, why or what boundaries you need to make and why you need to make them. 
couldn't get I couldn't get that phrase out. I'm just struggling. So what boundaries you need to make and why you need to set them. Two, the benefits of setting them. And three, three, why it is so important and imperative that you not break these boundaries. Now, remember this too. Um, it's probably not going to feel easy at first if you're used to doing this, but it's not that what you're doing again is wrong. It's because you have a belief that other people are more important than you, that you don't matter, that you can come last. And if you're used to doing that, it's no surprise that other parts in your life come last too, like your health, your nutrition, your movement, your self-care, your time management, because you're constantly trying to keep up with others. You don't like to be alone. You haven't learned how to just be with yourself and sit with yourself. You want to be accepted and you really just like staying busy and again, just keeping up. You want to keep up. You don't want to have that FOMO. So it can feel kind of weird at first when you set these boundaries. Um, I know, for instance, like a lot of moms that I work with um, feel really worried about setting boundaries with their children um, or even, you know, their spouse when they're they, when they ask for more me time. Um, so I just want to encourage you that the more you do this work and um, kind of just spell out what you're truly scared of and what you've been avoiding in terms of setting boundaries, you will see that there's really nothing to be scared of and it's actually a very healthy thing for you to do. And the reality is you're going to feel better and better and better uh, doing less because you're going to find that you accomplish more. Okay? Um, now again, in LRD, uh, whether you do our DIY mini course 180 or our you know lifetime access with the group support 2.0, we teach boundary setting and more inside of this. So if you are interested, we have an awesome incentive for LRD right now. Um, I'll go ahead and link that stuff in the comments when we're done here. But I really hope that this training helped. I love doing these with you. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the thread. We can continue the conversation. But that's all I've got for you today. Um, I really, really hope that you took this assignment to heart. I really hope that you complete it. Um, always, if, if, you know, if you take any notes or you've been implementing this, screenshot it, tag me in it. I'll share it on my Insta page. I love to share the progress that you're making and encourage other people as well. But that's all I've got. I love y'all so much. Tomorrow is Friday. I'm stoked for that. But again, I really, really, really hope um, you took some notes. I hope this really helps you and Maybe this will give you some encouragement and help you feel empowered going into the weekend and as we open back up and start going back out into the world and, and you know, there's going to be a lot of social demand to, to get with friends and get togethers and blow off steam and I think this is a really great time to start thinking about boundaries and what that's going to look like when you go back out into the real world. Um, especially if you've been trying to work on your personal development and have these goals for yourself. So anyways, y'all are the best. I love y'all so much and I will see y'all soon. All right. Bye y'all.